I'm here at the historic Round Lake Auditorium. This organ is the only musical instrument designated as a landmark by the United States Department of the Interior. It's really quite an incredible instrument. And on my recital, which I'm going to play, I'm going to finish the program with the Johann Sebastian Bach's Toccata and Fugue in F major. A great piece, a wonderful track or organ on which you can do this, but there are challenges, and I'm going to illustrate that challenge by showing you the beginning of the first pedal solo in the Toccata. So what you have is here you've got the beginning solo. Oops, where's the note? Okay, see th this is what happens. And that is that even though this organ has a 30 note pedal board, because it was adapted from an English organ originally, which had no pedals as far as I could tell, um, it is suited to a keyboard that has a 25 note compass. So what you have is you have base C to middle C. And of course here what we have is we have a piece that Johann Sebastian Bach specifically designed to show off an organ with an extended pedal compass all the way up to F. So you say to yourself, well, then that defeats the purpose of this piece because you're trying to do it on a short compass pedal board. And philosophically, you might be right. So one really has two choices to make when approaching an organ like this with a piece like this. Choice number one is simply say, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. Don't be silly the way I am trying to actually do this. The other thing is to say, well, is it still worth it? And one reason why I think it is worth it is because many of Bach's prelude and fugues, you have the prelude and fugue, and they both stray up into the pedal point D. And so there are quite a few pieces that you perhaps do not want to take to this organ. But with this particular piece, the Toccata and Fugue in F, the fugue is a monumental piece. And fortuitously, even though Bach paired it with this Toccata to show off an organ with an extended compass, the simple fact of the matter is that the fugue itself never goes higher than C. In fact, there's only one middle C in the pedal in the entire fugue. So now when you're beginning the Toccata, obviously it's fine because you're just sitting on a pedal point. No problem. No problem at all. Obviously you're just sitting on that note. So it's just basically sitting there at the note. So then we get to that first solo, and this is actually one of the very, in fact, this is the only time in the piece that I've decided to actually change a couple of the notes that Bach wrote, uh, because you want to start in that range. You, you, could, you don't want to start an octave lower, you run into other trouble. So what I do is, sounds like this. So I'm just basically taking, I'm just changing a couple notes. And so the whole pedal solo, I don't think it's really hurt too much and it's nothing that maybe Bach would not have done himself. noisy, but it used to be a lot noisier, so there's been a lot of 
wonderful work done on this organ by Andover Pedal Company. And then we're back to the next pedal point. And we're fine. Now we get to the next pedal solo. And this will definitely run into trouble because again, what you see is that you're starting you're very firmly in range. No problem. So far, so good. Uh oh. And now we are totally in the range of notes that can't be played. So I've decided, given the incredible integrity of box writing, this is one place where I think halfway through I could just take it down an octave and the people who really, really, really know the piece might raise an eyebrow. But overall, I think because of the integrity of Bach's composition, it works. Again, some people may say, well, taking it down an octave, that sounds strange. Obviously, Bach likes to soar, likes to really get it up in that range. Of course, that's part of his musical expression, but it can still work. And then when you get here, he would normally be in the upper octave. <laughs> And he's, he's got these octaves, but because I took it down an octave, I'm now in a lower octave. So I can either repeat the note, or I can just bounce the octaves in inversion. Well, I, I just invert them because he has other such octaves that are inverted. And then by the time you get to the toccata proper, you're back in range. And actually what will happen is you're in good shape for, for a while after this. Um, all the way through these different passages and you'll even get to this D minor passage and I mean even when you got all this pedal stuff going on no problem that you'll get to another D major that, eh, you just gotta take it down an octave. So you're going to have to take a couple things down an octave and you just have to be very, very deliberate about it. Now what happens is in the next section, he has this sequence, or it goes from G to F to E to D. It's a wonderful sequence, but halfway through it, what Bach does is he raises the pedal going up to the upper octaves. And it creates wonderful, wonderful tension. And of course it's what he intended, but, if one needs to simply take that sequence to its natural conclusion down the octave, you're able to stay in range, and I actually don't think there's a real problem. So this is what the sequence sounds like 
doing it the way I'm going to do it with just, it just keeps going down. an inverted pedal right there okay if you didn't really really know the piece I bet you that didn't bother you one bit because again it's a sequence so just taking it down the octave it works really well now the next passage is the nastiest passage hands and pedal anyway in the whole piece so even if you're playing it the way Bach wrote it it's still really really treacherous um, it gets into upper ranges, and so you have a lot of Ds and, and Es, and so again, I have to end up playing it an octave down, and this is really tricky. This, this takes some practicing. So uh, um, what he has is he has the pedals this. And he jumps up the octave. So what I have to do is simply stay down. This is all down the octave. Now up. And then the organist always breathes a little easier when they get there anyway. So some things just had to be taken down the octave. There's another little D here that has to be taken down the octave. One of my least favorite passages that I have to take down is this G minor, which is in this third section. Um, and it doesn't even help that this is a flat pedal board. Um, that makes it a little treacherous too, playing some of those low notes, even though it's not bad. But you have to play. Now, there's some people that may say, well, there's only certain notes that go up. So maybe you only have to transpose certain things. But what I find is that I think it's better to play entire passages in one octave. I feel it does less violence to the musical structure. And also, then it's just easier to play the way that we practiced it on a full compass pedal board organ. So we have this here. This has to be taken down the octave. And so what happens is he writes this wonderful passage in alternating octaves anyway. <laughs> Genius. Just simply, it allows him to do a scale and yet alternate the feet. And so because he's doing those different octaves, it allows me to be in the lower octave and sneak back into his octave. And then we finally, right after that, you have one last thing that goes up to, to, um, to D. So after you're doing this, you have to weigh this down an octave. Now here's the good news. Once you get to that G minor arrival, the rest of the piece now doesn't go higher than C. So once you get past that D, you're doing all right. So this is all where Bach wrote it. Even going up to C here. Love it, love it. As I said, it's just great to the end. Even at the end with all the pedaling, it stays within range. Um, so
So those last almost three pages, you can pretty much take as written. Then as I mentioned earlier, the fugue actually stays firmly within range. It has a first section which has pedal and then a second section I go to a secondary manual and has absolutely no pedal and that's a totally different fugue subject. And then in the incredible finale where you have the initial fugue subject in the hands and where then the second subject comes in against it in the pedal. Okay, that's the only time the pedal comes up to C. This is what it sounds like. Here's C. That's the only middle C in the entire fugue. Everything else is firmly well within range. So here you've got this. This is the initial subject. gravitas at the end with that great last piece. Um, it's great having one of these, some of these lower stops on this instrument that just add incredibly to the, the ending of the piece. Um, uh, there's no good place to start, I'll just start here. <laughs> find that the true gravity of this fugue and the wonderful way it sounds on this instrument, it makes it worth doing this piece. So then the choice is, do you do just the fugue or do you do the toccata and the fugue? And I've decided to do both, just having to adjust a few things in the pedal. But thanks to Bach's wonderful writing and the wonderful sound of this round like organ, it works. <laughs>